There are several aspects of branding, but most of us are illiterate when it comes to the topic of branding. As an SME focus program, we have brought this addition to you to educate all our entrepreneurs out there on the necessity of branding in building a business. My name is Tassitius Adam Dopogno, and this is Business Lens, where we talk about issues concerning SMEs across Africa. Today, my guest is a brand expert. He's written several books, and his book has been a best-selling book on Amazon for personal branding. Join me after this break, and let's welcome my guest, who will be educating us on how SMEs can build brands that stand out. Bernard Kelvin Clive is an author, a speaker, and a trainer. He is Ghana's foremost authority on personal branding and digital publishing. He is a personal branding coach and a brand strategist at BKC Consulting with over 10 years of experience in digital publishing. He has offered consulting services to hundreds of writers, poets, and authors, both locally and internationally, to self-publish their books. He is an Amazon best-selling author with over 30 published books, including The Art of Personal Branding, How to Publish and Sell Your Books with Little or No Money, Rebrand, The Ultimate Guide to Personal Branding, and Entrepreneur, Creating Multiple Streams of Income as an Author. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining That's us. It's a pleasure, I treasure. Mm, it's, it's great to have you. Thank you. By the time we are done, I hope my brand IQ will be a bit <laughs> higher than, <laughs> than it is right now. Great. Yeah. Uh, what have you been up to lately? Writing and working towards an upcoming workshop. Oh, okay. What have you been writing? Um, okay, the, the fact is that I write daily, uh, okay. like bits and bytes and pieces and articles, but the right daily. Currently, I'm writing towards one of my upcoming books too, mm. and content, and also really working towards a workshop. Okay, what yeah. workshop is that? Workshop for authors, aspiring authors, writers, or established authors who want to really publish their book digitally, go global. Okay. Especially because we're in a digital age, so the, the idea is to help authors position themselves globally in the digital form. So get your books on Amazon or get it in print. That's what we do. Mm. Okay. And as a brand expert, I guess um, uh, building brands for your books and for your events is no problem, is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the things about brands or business or individuals is, is it progressive, but it's, it's not just one static thing that you write and everything. Is there. Okay. Yeah, you need to really constantly work on, on, on your brands and your, your company, whether personal or corporate, is consistently so it becomes top of mind. Mm to your audience or your market, if not you feel that easily and quickly. <laughs> Great, so let's start with the branding aspect. Uh, when we talk about branding, uh, is it just the logo, the combination of colors, or the name of a company? I define branding as the ability to constantly create in the mind of your audience or your market that there's no product or service like yours mm. by providing distinct value. Wow, that, that's, that's uh, <laughs> a, a deep, a deep <laughs> definition. Yeah. Let, let's take it uh, gradually. So, mm -hmm. as it is the ability to constantly okay. and consistently okay. create a perception mm -hmm. in the mind of your market or your audience mm -hmm. that there's no product or service like yours okay. by providing distinct value. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that will set you apart mm -hmm. from the other markets, other brands. That means after letting them, telling them that my product is superior, you should move a step further to provide actually a service that is distinct and superior. Exactly. Great. That will keep it in their minds that this product, this program, business mm. links, that's just there's something unique about you that we want to listen to you or watch you or want to buy from you. Wow. Wow. It, it, it seems to entail a lot because uh, if, if you are telling your customers that my product is the best on the market, then it must cost a fortune to build a solid okay. brand. Okay, 14 years in a way, mm -hmm. 14 could be investment of time, energy, and money. Okay. And so that, that may cost you something because nothing, nothing good comes free or easily. So it's going to cost you something, some time, investment, some money. And this age, let me, let, let, let's go. I, I said that if there are two ways to achieve anything in, in, in this age. Okay. One, either you have the money to help you shortcut your process or you invest a lot of time and energy to study and work your way out mm. so if you have money you can quickly buy um, your billboards ads by media ads to get your yourself known okay but that is one aspect that when they come and taste what you have 
is it what you said you, you have, have? Mm. That, that, that caused me to really uh, push in this Bible passage a story that we all might have heard in various forms that when the Queen of Sheba heard of Solomon's what? wisdom wisdom and mm. fame she, she went to see okay. so firstly they will hear about business lens they will hear about you mm. that's one one channel which people get us get to hear about business or brands okay there's this new business the market or uh, on the market there's new this person this product they will hear mm. or they will see images they'll see image social media offline billboards they will see then they will come and experience and okay. test whether is this what you said you you are or you have if you don't have then your brand begins to fade away so people will see they will hear but they want to come and taste and experience that is that what the brand really is okay so looking at these three things uh, which one should come first should you build the <laughs> superior product first or you should start by telling people that i can do this for you L let, let me chip in this story again uh -huh. one of my three examples i give since we in Canadian, do you, do you, do you eat watch right? I do. Uh, you, 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 you like watch. I love watch. Okay, I mean, um, all of us do like watch. Or okay. even you know, the point is, do you know any watch seller in your locality area? Mm -hmm. She has no signboard, no yeah. business card, no sign, but people queue either in cars or yeah. rent to buy the watch. Why? Mm, I spend two hours after church to buy a watch <laughs> every Sunday. <laughs> yeah, the point is, let me do it. The point is simply mm. the watch is good. It okay. is good. So that is the value. Mm. So once you have value, people will start searching for you. And with that, it helps you spread your brand easily. So the first thing I tell entrepreneurs, upcoming entrepreneurs, the business owners, SMEs, that focus on producing distinct value. Mm. The rest can be done with ease. Okay. The one you have very good product, irresistibly good product, it becomes easier to market your product. So that's the first aspect of brand position and building. Okay. Having very, very valuable, good, distinct product or service. Wow. In a circumstance where um, you need a lot of funds to build a superior product, and the market is almost saturated. Mm -hmm. Whatever you are producing, there's a multinational somewhere who is also producing something similar uh, right. and who, who has an upper hand in terms of uh, quality. How can you, aside the challenges, mm -hmm. create a brand that stands out and stands out in the market so that every customer knows that if I'm looking for this, there's a small company somewhere who is also producing a similar product and I should go for that instead. If we are focused on SMEs, we look at the MVPs, mm -hmm. minimum viable, viable products, product, mm -hmm. or one of my friends say minimum viable products. Okay. <laughs> that, that, that I'll because explain. MVP. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is the point that you can't beat multinationals or huge companies who have the fangs and the name mm -hmm. with a similar products in the market. This is what I tell SMEs do this focus on a niche market. Okay. If there's seven the entire population, okay, I'm producing new, new this new soft drink, mm. and this drink is for only kids. Mm. I'm niching it down, and even it's for kids, I'm making sure that the price is a little bit low, bit down, so that they can afford at maybe fifty plus words or something, so that I'm not ta trying to target the same market that this big beverage companies are targeting and niche down. Okay, I'm going to sell only my product to so so and so school, only schools, okay, only churches, only mocks. So. You, when you focus on a niche specific market, you can easily either price your product a little bit higher, depending on what product you're selling. Mm -hmm. Now, this, if it, this is a product, yeah. okay, instead of producing it for the masses, so we know we have the big brands in, in, who into production of bags, right? Yeah. Belts and other products. Uh, okay, having to see a lot of African print bags and products, mm -hmm. this is what I tell them, uh, the young executives or entrepreneurs. Like, this will be trying to do African print bags for everyone. Mm -hmm. Why don't you focus on, I'm doing African print bags only for kids. Okay. So that if a mom wants the same brand for the kid, your name, your product, your business will come to mind. Mm. Okay, even for kids, look for toddlers. Sure. You do baby shoes, nice African prints. Yeah. It's, it's a good market. Someone should be thinking about this that's right now. Free business business idea. Idea. <laughs> so well, basically, that's yeah. how it works. When you niche your product down, you can then begin to reach out to the market. Then when you see the program is growing, you can then look at how to expand to reach other markets. We'll be right back after the break to continue.
Thank you very much for staying with us. This is Business Lens, the SME-focused television show where we unearth the challenges affecting SMEs and try to provide solutions for them. Today, we are talking about branding, and I'm really enjoying the discussion and learning a lot from Bernard Calvin Clive, who is an author and a personal branding coach. He is going to tell us more about how companies or how SMEs can stand out in the market. Let's move to some of the basics of branding, uh, like we started with. Of course, your name is part of your brand. Mm -hmm. um, your tagline is part of your brand. Um, your logo is part of your brand. What should SMEs consider when selecting these important things that comprise their brand? Okay, the first thing I, I tell SMEs then, uh, get a brand identity expert. Don't try to be, don't because you're a startup want to do everything yourself. Okay. You do your logo, you do, and when you get a brand identity expert, go and design the logo for you, the colors, your tagline, what goes into a brand. My, my, it don't cost you that much, let me put it so. Okay. So that you focus on what you are so good at. Most of the time, we want to do everything on our own. That, that's one of the things that breaks SMEs. Okay. So invest a little in I mean, employing or getting a brand identity expert to do your brand expert for you. Then focus on if it's uh, whatever your business is, produce that so well. Mm. Once your identity is done, the, the, the other thing, you just have, need to get a fair idea of what a logo needs to, what goes into a logo, what a tagline should be. You can share, but don't override the brand designers, identity designers with your own personal feelings. Okay. You want the class to be right or something, no. Mm -hmm. But your company, what you want, what you want to market in the market will not go with red logo. Okay. So that's one of the things that we really need to consider. Just outsource that aspect. Focus on what you're good at and you can run your business smoothly and easily. Okay. And one aspect of the brand of a company uh, is also the kind of people who work mm -hmm. in that particular company. How do you get your employees to, to buy into the idea of the company and be ambassadors of the, the brand you're trying to sell? Well, one, one, of, one of the things that we do is we, we really train companies to help their staff become their brand ambassadors. Okay. That's one of the things. And I believe that companies really need that kind of thing, that you don't just employ them because of their expertise, but because make sure they feel part of their company. Mm -hmm. When they do so, they can market your company with ease. Okay. So it's a training and orientation that you must do as a manager, CEO, that you need to rearrange your staff. Let them buy into your company's vision and mission. Mm -hmm. And what I call, you need to create a, what I call a brand culture for the company. Okay. And here, that's what we do. This is what, that's, that's, that's why, let me throw in some few companies. Google has a Google company culture. If they are so and so Fridays, this day, so they, they, they find ways to bond with the staff. Okay. When the staff feel loved and cared for, not just only exchanging their time for money, they're able to help and position the brands effectively whether online or offline, they can come and say, I work with so-and-so company, mm. and then I can sell in the market. Because the key thing for, for all SMEs, managers, you know that people buy into you before your business and your brand. I got to know you before business lens. Sure. So I, because I like you, mm -hmm. I buy into your vision of business lens and anything other thing you do. So as a CEO, one of the things you need to understand that people will buy into your staff and you before your business so if you treat them well make sure empower them let them feel part of the company mm. your business will grow with ease wow do you think uh, in africa and in ghana for instance we really pay attention to branding uh, few do few throw in the, the words here and there without deeper understanding of, of what it what it, it is and what they must do mm. but those who really pay attention to to their brands and their business do excel mm. why do you think um majority of them don't pay attention to branding. First is understand you don't know what really it's about. They think it's about logos, about colors, mm -hmm. and they think that it's all about brands. Yeah. And the, when you begin to understand and appreciate the benefits that goes into branding a company, the people will pay more attention and the return on investment will be greater and, and higher. But without basic understanding what it is, uh, just to throw in a few bars when they think I'm branding, no, you're not branding. I uh, just put in some logos and colors or just saying some few things. But deeper understand, seek that. Why has some, some companies been here for centuries and decades and are still thriving? Mm -hmm. Because they've been able to position their brands effectively. I have a water company. Great. And I've come to you as a brand expert. Uh, there are several water bottling so companies the in the country. Yeah. And I want to stand out. Where do we start from? The first thing, we need to do a deeper research mm -hmm. uh, so of the, the companies assessing what they are doing right, 
what they are doing wrong. Okay. Then the second, if we look at our market, our audience, who are we trying to reach mm. with our new bottled water? Okay. In fact, I, I was, the company was helping a company to, I mean, package a channel in new water. And they, they weren't taking heed to the advice we were given. Okay. We're given. So the point is this, that you must do your research. It's one of the things that we easily forget. We think sure. of, I just packing some water and start selling. So, okay, then who do you want to reach? Okay, I want to reach the middle class. Mm -hmm. Or this one, I want to reach low income. Though it's bottled water, low income, but make sure it's affordable. Yeah. So you are, you are throwing in price here. So when you find out this, my market, then where do I get them? Okay, they are in schools. This water is only for students. Okay. So you can get them only in schools. So you target the schools. The schools, how do you reach them? The headmasters. The school, I mean, heads. These yeah. are channels or parents, PTA. So you mm -hmm. find out channels to reach your market. Okay. We, when this is made and this reach is made, the rest will become easier. Then you go look at the brand identity, the colors, the all goes my audience, the colors. Then okay, the, the, the kids will like this for water. Okay. They'll be good to go. All so right. this is a simple thing that you can really consider. All okay. right. Let's spend some time on uh, the, the the design and the packaging of products, um, because like it or not, no matter how good your product is. If the package is not attractive, um, nobody is still going to look at it. Right, yeah. So, what are the things you consider in uh, designing and uh, packaging a product? One, user experience. Okay. Uh, so, and, uh, no matter how it looks beautiful, very, I mean, but how would they use it? Okay. Assuming this this glass was, I mean, is there something in the middle or something? Look so good, but how can we drink effectively from it? Too? Okay. So you look at that and make sure that it's appealing to the eye because we want to see first. Mm -hmm. People want to see before they what what attract what appeal to them is their eyes. Yeah. They put their senses. If it's something they need to smell, sure. They need to touch. So depending on your product, make sure that all these things that you look at per design, you feel if it's a perfume, perfume the bottle needs to look good, mm -hmm. but you need to I mean smell it. Yeah. If it's something you need to taste it. Mm -hmm. So these are ways to inform you in designing. Then you could look at the colours. My market, which market, which colours will be fit kids, will be fit adults, will they appeal to them more? Then that goes into your package of your product and service. You want to make it easy for them to open or close or to be able to look at security, look at all these features before your products are all designed. So mostly I advise that you do a prototype okay. of, the, of your design before you finally ship it. So you get to understand how the customers relate to the particular design. Yeah. Wow, that, that, that's interesting. Well, this is Business Lens, and uh, today we are learning about branding for SMEs. Uh, my guest is Bernard Calvin Clive, who is a renowned uh, brand expert. Don't, don't go away. Uh, stay with us if you can. We will be right back after this break. So thank you very much for staying with us. This is Business Lens TV show. Today my guest is Bernard Calvin Clive and we so far have been learning about how to brand your SME and how to position your company to be successful and to stand out amongst several brands which are on the market. We've come to the section where we look more at personal branding. Um, the entrepreneur leading the company, the people working in the company, how do you brand yourself as an entrepreneur? So, Bernard, yeah. I am an entrepreneur. What are the channels that I can use to brand myself? And how do I go about packaging myself for the market, for investors, and for consumers to buy? Okay, so the, the first thing that you need to do is really need to focus on yourself. Okay. Uh, though you want to reach out to others, you need to be stronger to help lift others up. You need to be, um, Jim Rohn stated that to attract attractive people, you must be attractive. Okay. So that you want to reach such market, you must position yourself properly. Okay. Like attracts like. Exactly. All right. So I, I believe in this age that we are, people buy into people before product and services. Mm. So as a SME, CEO, entrepreneur, that people are buying to you, your version, your brand, before the, any other thing that you want to sell. Okay. So it's about time you need to really position yourself. The first thing you need to do in building your personal brand is ask your why. It's very critical. That is, you need to know your purpose in life. I'm going to talk about your business, your personal mission statement, your purpose. Okay. Because until you have a clear direction and sense of purpose in your life, you will be building a fake brand. Mm. So every individual, you need to why am I doing this? Why am I here on earth? 
you need to really delve deeper into your purpose. Wow. Once that is settled, you can then look at how to build your personal brand. Because I've seen a lot of fake celebrated brands. Yeah. They miss the mark of what God has called and assigned them to do. Mm -hmm. Keep I, I, I say that the fact that you can do something doesn't mean you are called to do it. So as SME CEO, know that what do you want to do? What has God called you to do, regardless of your faith and religion? When that's settled, we look at the other pillars of building your brand. So the first pillar of building your brand is purpose. Okay. So as I walk us through the, the purpose itself, the P is your passions. What am I passionate about? Maybe you would like to see SMEs, entrepreneurs excel. You are yeah. passionate about entrepreneurship. Um, okay passionate about that. So that's your passion. Your passions serve as your pointers to your purpose. Look at what you're passionate about. That's in, in the purpose. Then you come to, in purpose, we have, what is the next in purpose? We have you. Okay. The you in your purpose is understand you. You need to really understand and understand who you are. Why do you, do you like black ties or red ties? Why does red really appeal to you? Okay. Why do you like warm water? Why, you know, you need to really understand yourself. What I tell people, you, jokingly, like you need to date yourself. Okay. Take time for yourself and know who you are. That will help you position yourself properly in the kind of business you need to do and where you can try. So that's the you in purpose. The next is R. Find out what are the resources that will help me position myself properly. Mm -hmm. So in this age, we have books. We have products, we have audience, we have seminars, we have workshops, we have mentors, we have entities. These are people that, that serve as your resources. So you really need to work hard on yourself. Having a talent is not just good enough. You need, okay. you need to really the resource. The next in your building your purpose and passion to build your personal brand is the other P. That's why you need to position yourself. Now, knowing what I'm good at, I can play guitar, I love guitar, I love music. Now I'm going to play only acoustic guitars. Brand positioning. I'm going to play only for kids or for adults, your market. So that, that's a fee. The next one is when, when you're able to identify and position yourself, it's going to create opportunities for you. Okay, for anybody to host a program, to MC a, a program, let's call you. Of any business that can do products for kids, for adults, let's call you. For a good photographer, let's call Kofi. For this, let's call Kwame. Then your position will create opportunities for you. For you. Mm. The S is regardless of whatever we are doing as individuals in business, is to do serve. Okay. Business Lens is serving the community, serving SMEs, CEOs, I mean, managers, helping them to grow. Yeah. So our goal is to serve. So whatever your assignment is to serve people. Mm. My book serves people, serve serve people. Then in the midst of all, the last one is E. Yeah. When you do all this, you're going to earn. You earn trust, a okay. good name, you earn money, you earn some cash. Mm. So that is the framework of your purpose in building your brand. When you put all this together, it's going to give you what you will really need to help you position your personal brand for corporate leverage. Okay, we are now in the technology world where uh, the web has become the second uh, face of uh, everybody. Uh, if, if I want to know you, of course, um, I contacted you through LinkedIn. Right. That is the first place of the, the, the first point of contact. How can an entrepreneur position himself better on the web? Okay. Once you know your purpose, your market, where you want to reach, find out where your where will you reach. So, as an SME, you know that to reach a lot of entrepreneurs, you need to go to social media platform called LinkedIn. Yeah. So create a, a, a professional profile on LinkedIn. So you choose the platform based on your audience and your market. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm a photographer or I'm in the food industry. One of the best platforms I recommend is to use Instagram okay. or use Facebook. They want to see images, sure. something appealing. So based on the business you want to do, you choose the platform, use Pinterest, where there are a lot of images. If you want them to become a writer and author, then you choose a blogging platform. Okay. Use Medium. So these are the, these avenues or social media platform informs your decision based on who your market is and what you want to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. And I said, without a social media presence, especially in this age, most business will not do so well. Yeah. So first thing, have a professional profile across board. Okay. Make sure it's authentic. You are not fake faking anything, saying you are this, that you are not, having mm -hmm. titles that you are not. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, the internet doesn't lie. Yeah. We found out. So be very clear about how you position yourself on the internet. That's one way to help.
Well, this has been another edition of our program, Business Lens, the SME Focus TV show. And today we've had a great resource person who uh, has educated us on how to brand your company and how to brand yourself, both uh, in real life and in a virtual life, which happens online. It's been wonderful having you once again. My name is Tarsitius Edem. Dofonyo.